What's up guys? This is Chris here from East Coast PC and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Intel Arc GPUs. Where are they at? While most people still can't buy one, the overall disaster of a GPU launch Intel has had and why most of you probably should not buy one even if you could buy one. Before we get started, if there's anybody who is not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, comment, do all that good YouTube stuff. We appreciate each and every one of y'all so much. So with that out of the way, let's get started. All right, guys. So if you wanted one of these Intel Arc A380 cards, where would you even go about getting one? Well, finally here in the United States, we have one card available on back order, and that is the ASRock Challenger Intel Arc A380 card, and it's available for back order on Newegg. Now, there is no exact ship date on that card, but it is available for purchase right now, and I do believe if you order one, it, it would probably arrive within a few weeks or so. Usually when Newegg gives you the option to back order things usually don't take that long and they basically most of the time it seems like they've been guaranteed some products or, or they don't do the back orders unless they're pretty confident they're getting that product now with that being said that the product is 139.99 at the time of filming and it is on back order at this time of filming also and this is saturday august 26th so by the time this video goes up um it, it it hopefully it'll go up today but uh in case it doesn't uh you know things could change but even though you can back order one and buy one should you buy one well for most of us and most of y'all probably not and the reason why is if there's a lot of people that are watching this video may not know that much of the story about these cards but uh basically they got delayed for a long time over and over again and they said they were coming and they said they were coming again and three months later they were coming again they drop a, a few hints and teasers and all this stuff and finally uh, a few months ago when they finally did uh, say they launched the card they only launched to, to me and everybody else is in the media's knowledge one uh, card in China. There was a Chinese exclusive launch and it was the Gunner A380 if I'm not mistaken. It was a brand called Gunner. Most people don't even know who they are. They are basically just a small no-name brand. Uh, they're definitely not big in the PC industry. So why would Intel do that? Um, just because the cards are going to get in reviewers hands regardless just like they did with reviewers buying them from China and it just makes the whole situation look even worse if they would have just released it and said hey the card is broken or the or the drivers are partly broken right now uh it, it performs well in some dx12 and vulcan games but dx11 is a real mess right now and we're trying to launch it for a low price while we work with the industry to get our drivers working right with these cards and as we move forward with the art product lineup but instead, they did a Chinese only launched, only launched one card, didn't send out any review samples, let reviewers buy them from China and review them, and they got dog crap smeared all in their face, in my opinion. Now, I am very happy uh, that Intel is entering the GPU market, and I'm somebody that's very excited for it personally because anybody that says they're going to bring budget cards to the market one of the things that i enjoy doing is finding ways to help kids get cheap gaming computers and without any budget gpus that is very hard thing to do so i was very excited personally for that reason obviously it's not nothing that i'm going to put in my machine i'm an enthusiast and i'm definitely probably won't be rocking a nvidia card for a while just because of stability alone but uh, let's talk about a little bit of performance. Now, I don't have one of these cards on hand. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to be putting up some benchmarks courtesy of Hardware Unboxed. And uh, shout out to them guys. Uh, I'm going to be using a few of their benchmarks in here. And we're just going to be basically talking about if anybody is to buy this card, which is a cool little thing to play with, just you know, know what you're buying and know that it's just not going to do a lot of things you need it to do. It seems to be good at encoding, but who knows if it'll actually work in the application that you're trying to encode something in. And see, that's where the problem comes in. The, the games, uh, as far as DX12 and Vulcan go, a lot of them perform pretty good at, for that price range at... A hundred and thirty-nine dollars. Uh, you can get the sixty s sixty FPS uh, pretty easily, and uh, and 
a good portion of the DX12 and Vulcan games, but so many games that people still play every single day are DX11. And when you mix those in, is it is an absolute disaster. Um, Hardware Unboxed, I think, tested 51 titles, and I, I'll have that on the screen. And he found out on average, compared to the Radeon RX 6400, which is a terrible card in its own right, except for the fact that uh, it's a half-height PCI Express card that can slide into slim systems. That's about the only thing good about it. It loses the DAT on seven uh, by seven percent on average when all the games are mixed together, and that's pretty bad for as long as we waited. But what happened? Well, it's pretty simple. It, it's pretty simple what happened in the grand scheme of things even though there's so many complex issues that went into this is when you're starting up a gpu a company that is going to make gpus from the ground up now intel has been around and they have been manufacturing their igpus and their cpus for a very long time but and so they should have some experience that's why they don't get so much of a pass uh, but anytime you are starting up a gpu division is how i should have worded it um, the thing you got to realize is all these new games that are coming out, Spider-Man or like games that have came out recently, Forza, Horizon 5, Red Dead Redemption 2, Doom Eternal, Call of Duty Warzone, you know, so many of the newer games that are DX12 and, and Vulcan, you know, you optimize your, your uh, um, graphics cards and drivers for those titles. Well, the problem comes in when there's i mean there's thousands and thousands and thousands of older titles dx11 dx9 and, and so on uh, dx10 10.1 so on and so forth and so many of those other them older games just uh, apparently got pushed to the back burner burner they only got worked on a little bit here and there it seems like and it just turned into an unmitigated disaster and i really hope intel gets these GPUs back on track. Um, I'm, I'm, they're supposed to be launching a set. I think it's going to be called the Arc A750. It's going to be the 700 series, some some graphics card in the 700 series, which is going to be a card that they have put out benchmarks of it competing well with the RTX 3060. Again, that is in DX12 and Vulcan titles, and there might there may be a few DX11 titles here and there that do all right, but for the most part. DX11 was a massive problem, and that's a big problem for me and almost every other gamer on the planet. So, with that being said, what can we take away from this? Well, we can take away that uh, while it's very good to see Intel enter into GPU market, it is very, very hard to start a GPU division from the ground up when you're working against NVIDIA and AMD who have had drivers and made drivers for them old games five and ten years ago when them games originally came out and where intel is is now creating uh, discrete graphics cards and they are trying to not only create drivers for the new games but go back and make drivers for every single old title especially the popular ones and it's just so much of a huge undertaking it takes so much time work and development that it just really turned into a, a big problem but hopefully things get better and better. Hopefully they get back on track. There is potentially some bad news uh, in some investors' calls and stuff. Intel has hinted that they don't know exactly, you know, what's what comes next for Intel Arc. They say they want to compete and they are dedicated to it. But there's also been other reports that if things get bad enough, that they could just kill the Intel Arc discrete graphics card division altogether. And the reason why is because it's been estimated by Intel. Uh, supposedly that it's going to take the Intel Arc graphics division five years to become profitable. And if the company is struggling because of the economy, uh, still some, you know, all kinds of COVID related issues as far as staffing, development, stuff like that. Uh, if they're still struggling from all that stuff and they are losing money in, in, in certain quarters, then it's going to be very hard to justify to the to all the investors that Intel has to keep that in to keep that Intel Arc graphics division going, but hopefully we can hope and pray it'll stay afloat because like I've said so many times, competition is good for the market. I really like what the little bit that I've seen about their encoding support. It looks to be really strong, but 
I do not recommend at this time most people buy one of these cards for their machines because, or I, I basically don't recommend anybody buying one of these cards unless you are somebody like an enthusiast or somebody that messes with computers a lot. You have a spare card and you just want to play around with the card, test it, have fun with it, see what it's good at and see what it's not good at. Uh, because if I'm buying this card, you know, I work on computers on the side. Uh, do as much as I can and I love building computers for people so if I sell comp somebody a computer just somebody that's running a, a home a business from home needs a reliable somewhat powerful computer to uh, run his business on if I sell him a computer and put an Intel Arc GPU in there their drivers are an absolute mess and even if he isn't playing games he could be getting system crashes uh, just blue screens all kinds of just wonky issues uh, any things that come with bad GPU driver problems, there is so much of a chance that he could have them with whatever program that he might be working in that Intel hasn't optimized for. So as far as stability goes, it's very hard to recommend this to anybody that's making a living with these GPUs, even if you didn't need a very powerful GPU at all. So that about takes care of all that stuff. All right, guys. So. That's going to about wrap this video up. I want to thank each and every one of y'all for watching this video. And if there's anybody who is not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Drop a like, comment, do all that good YouTube stuff. We appreciate each and every one of y'all so much and we will see y'all soon.